So uh, till now what is that we have seen is what is a node and how that can be uh, associated with a pool as a pool member and the purpose of doing all these things is what we are grouping a set of servers with the help of a pool so that the load can be distributed to the servers um, according to the distribution algorithm. But which traffic needs to be forwarded to which server because we may be having different different pools and different different pool members. Once I know to which of the pool it has to be sent only then I know to which of the server based on the algorithm I will be able to send it across. This is what the logic behind it. But the LTM is supposed to be receiving the traffic from the client so that you will be able to identify to which of the pool it has to be forwarded. So that is where the virtual server comes into picture. Virtual server is a logical component which is going to be associated with an IP address to which the client can be sending the traffic. Once the LTM receives the traffic for that particular IP address, there we are also going to be binding the pool to it. So once you receive the traffic to that IP address, pool is already mapped to it and we know the what, what distribution algorithm is being defined accordingly, one of the server is going to be chosen and the request can be forwarded to it. So the virtual server are nothing but a logical component and they are going to be identified either by uh, its IP address or its fully qualified domain name along with the port number. So the virtual server is the one going to be receiving the traffic from the client and which also going to be mapping the pool. The pool is consist of what? Pool members. It is not that only these basic functionalities are available with the virtual server. As an administrator, you can perform the NAC. You can also associate the persistence profile. You also can do the SSL processing. That means what? You may be receiving the uh, encrypted traffic on the front end where the public traffic could be seen. The public are connected. On the back end, I could have uh, a regular clear text traffic. Right? We have variety of additional features that could be associated with a virtual server. As we move forward, we will try to understand what and all we will be able to do it. Okay? So the virtual servers. The virtual servers are nothing but a logical component to which the traffic is going to be received where we are also going to be mapping a pool to it. Okay? So as part of the configuration, let us see, we are going to be configuring a virtual server with the name of Genesis underscore VS1 which is going to be having an IP address of 192.185.35.86. It will be listening on a port number of 80. So this pool, Genesis underscore web underscore pool 1 is going to be associated to the virtual server which means what the LTM may be receiving the traffic to this specific IP address on port 80. It has to distribute the load to one of the server in the pool called as Genesis underscore web underscore pool. Let us see how this is going to be configured. I am getting into my LTM appliance, you can see this virtual servers. As we said earlier, you can get into the virtual server and then create it or I can also create the uh, click on the plus symbol to create the virtual server. So the name of the virtual server, what is that we need to create is Genesis underscore VS1. So J-U-N-I Genesis underscore VS1. The IP address is 192.185.35.86. And it is supposed to be listening on the port number of 80. So the binding of this IP address to this virtual server is done. The next thing is what? To which pool the traffic needs to be distributed to. So you, you can see that the default pool. The default pool is the pool what we have created. Only one pool as of now we have created. That is what is available. As you create more number of pools, every pool you create will be available here. All you have to do is choose the pool to which the load needs to be distributed. Say finished. Now we are done with the virtual server creation, IP binding, the public IP binding as well as the map binding. Now the next step what we need to do is we need to generate some traffic to that virtual server and check it out whether the traffic is being forwarded to the server or not.